How many times have you had happy hour, bellied up to an Airstream travel trailer, and surrounded by wildflowers? So over here we have our 1971 Airstream. We're gone camping in a tent with high security. I don't think I've ever been camping at a place that has kind of like technology <laughs> happening to get in. We're exploring luxury camping, otherwise known as glamping, in Illinois. A little over an hour and a half southwest of Chicago, we're touring Camp Aramoni with entrepreneur Jennifer Bias. Located in LaSalle County, close to popular Starved Rock State Park, travelers venture here to unwind in safari-style tents at this luxury camping site, complete with local spirits made from Illinois corn and popular for weddings. And we're not leaving out happy hour, but this one will be extra special because inside Camp Aramoni's barn, we're toasting with Bob Windy of Star Union Spirits on this Travels with Darley podcast in Illinois. We're going camping. Glamping. Woo. Glamping is a popular recent trend where you can combine nature with the comforts of home and yet feel a world away. It's a trend I can get behind, which is why I've traveled southwest of Chicago to discover a camping site where history and travel combine with luxury accommodations. I'm taking a tour of Camp Aramoni with owner Jennifer Bias, followed by Cocktails at the Barn, a luxe gathering hub of the campground. Well, hi, Darley. I'm Jennifer Bias. I'm um, the, one of the owners of Camp Aramoni. My husband, Tim, and I own the property along with my daughter, Stephanie, and my son, Jake. And we have 96 acres. This project was built on a 19th century brickyard property. So we're down at the campground right now, and this is where they used to harvest the clay. So we um, just took all of the things that I love in life and put it all together. So I run an electrical contracting company by trade, but my life is all about gardening and family and hospitality and cooking and all of that. So what I wanted to do with this is build something for our retirement. And it was a lot of it was a lot of work. And there's an eagle flying by right now. <laughs> but uh, so what we did down here is all of where the brickyard was across here. We're here in 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 March, but this is all wildflowers that we planted, all Illinois indigenous wildflowers and prairie grass. So in season, this place is popping. It's beautiful it, and it's swaying in the wind and it's quiet and it's a place that, where people can come and leave the city and just kind of like forget about everything and sit and have cocktails or, or play with their kids or take them down to the river. Um, it's just an amazing place to just come and relax and just forget about everything that you've got going on. So we have 11 safari tents that we purchased from Bush Tech Safari, which they came from South Africa, and their engineers actually came out and visited us and helped us design the the layout of the of the campground. And most of the tents will sleep six people. We have four person tents, and then the last two are kind of like our honeymoon tents. And so inside, it is the full comfort of home. So part of it too is that we're not only a boutique camping site, but we also offer our guests uh, a gourmet cuisine. So they get a gourmet breakfast in the morning and they get a gourmet dinner at night. So that's included in their stay. Every tent has their own fire pit that our camp counselors will come and light the fire at night. We serve gourmet s'mores every night made by our chef. We make our own marshmallows and different mm, flavors. That sounds good. Yes. <laughs> and then there's also different experiences that we offer. Uh, you can get an in-suite massage. You can get a whiskey and chocolate flight. You can get a Chicago-style hot dog experience at your campground. We have live music on, on the weekends. It's just a really, really nice, you know, aha. Yeah, a nice aha. So over here, we have our 1971 Airstream. Which serves as the camp bar, serving coffee, cocktails, wine, With and beer. Lift. We're going to take a ride to see flora and fauna. Cool. Jennifer invites me into her Polaris Ranger UTV to tour more of the property. It's later in the afternoon, and the light on the grass and through the trees here is stunning. So this is just 
Oh, so, when you said flora and fauna, I thought we were going to see flora and fauna, but we're going to the you cabin are called it flora and fauna. Yeah, you're going to see flora and fauna. <laughs> so this is our honeymoon tent. And we called it flora and fauna because all of the other ones are named after the wildflowers, but this is like all inclusive of what Camp Aramoni is. I've been on a safari in Botswana, Africa, and these tents, so you could take a they remind me of those. Feel for it. I don't think I've ever been camping at a place that has this kind of like technology <laughs> happening to get in. Really. Well, you gotta be safe. Yeah, this is great. An electronic keypad opens Ooh. a wooden door leading into a lavishly decorated this room complete with carpets, yeah. wow. a king size bed, so our and much more. So it looks like a regular hotel room complete but, with a full um, bathroom. When... You'll see the copper above, there's beautiful lighting above the bed, and we have the chandelier, and there's lighting along the side, the, um, the bedding. It's just a very comfortable place. Everybody gets their own coffee maker, their own refrigerator, their own safe if they bring all their millions of dollars in jewelry, if they want to stay at Camp Aramoni. And then also we set up a little mini bar. Love it. This is great. This is and beautiful. And then in the summertime, to have all of the flaps open and then have these curtains that you can close for privacy, the breeze and the sounds of nature that come in, it just gives you the best night's sleep you've ever had. And we also have a split system, air conditioning when it's super hot in the summer and heating when we get into the colder months. You know, sometimes in September and October it gets chilly. And then in the bathroom, there is a two-person shower, flushable toilet. We have uh, bathrobes that we put out for the guests. This is um, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank is, you. Yeah. Thank you. We drive up a hill amid a trail in the woods to bricks and stones, housed in a 150-year-old building at Camp Aramoni. So where we're going now is up to the area where they actually made the bricks. And when Tim and I bought the place, it literally was an industrial ruin. Uh, when I first brought him here to show him and give him my idea, he, um, he thought I was crazy. He literally said, what are you thinking? But I had a vision and um, he did everything I asked. So I'm pretty lucky to have a guy that, uh, you know, does everything you ask him to do. A good man. A good man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We pass remnants of industry so, by the outdoor yeah, pavilion, used for weddings and, and events. So we have a big pavilion, and those concrete structures were part of a conveyor belt that used to run through the brickyard. And over here, you'll see some of the brick kilns where they used to fire the brick. But this kiln, we put a fountain in it, and this is where most of our first looks happen on our wedding days. It's filled with wildflowers in the springtime and the summer. And uh, I got here just in time when the bulldozer was ready to, to knock it down. And oh I got here after work and went running out in my high heels. I'm like, what are you doing? And over here we have two of the standing kilns. So they used to harvest the clay down there. And then up here, it would take seven days to heat the kiln up seven days to fire it, to fire the brick, and seven days to cool it down. And they used to make and ship 72,000 bricks a day from this property. So those are the three standing kilns of the 23 that were on the property. During the post-wedding cleanup inside Bricks and Stones, I grab a mini cupcake and tour the space before heading back to the barn, which sounds like it would be rustic but has an interior that is new and well-appointed, just like the rest of Camp Aramoni, where history and modernity mix. There's a spread of cheese, charcuterie, local honey, and vegetables out on a cheese board artistically made from an old log, along with mini barbecue sandwiches, mini loaded potatoes filled with cheese, sour cream, bacon, and topped with chives, coconut encrusted shrimp, and more. Food can be gourmet at glamping sites, and this one is no exception. Just down the road from Camp Aramoni is Star Union Spirits, where travelers can visit and tour. But Camp Aramoni and Star Union Spirits, they also partner on events and tastings. Owner Bob Windy is meeting me at the barn to sample some of these spirits. Okay, here we are at the Altar of Spirits. My favorite place to be on a Saturday. <laughs> Mine too. 
He's laid out a variety of intricately decorated bottles and has a drink already prepared for me to taste. I did to try this. It's a traditional brandy old fashioned. We make them right here in the Illinois Valley area. And we make brandy, whiskey, rum, grappa, vodka, agave, and absinthe. And, and tell me about this old fashioned. Traditional uh, brandy old fashioned. It's made with cherry brandy, made from Michigan cherries, a simple syrup, some bitters. And it's a very simple drink, but it's a traditional cocktail. Cheers. Ooh, I like that. It's got a nice sweetness, but it's not too, it's a sweet, savory sweet. Exactly. I love that. And I'm learning how to describe these cocktails so well the more I taste them. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fruity. Our uh, cherry brandy is aged for about two years. It makes fantastic old fashions and highballs. And we embrace classic cocktails, but we also are on the cutting edge and make very non-traditional cocktails in our tasting room. How did you get into this? I read a little about, about your story. I bought a house in Chicago. My next door neighbor was a winemaker for about 30 years. One afternoon I saw him moving some barrels around and I said, Charlie, what are you, what are you doing over there with that barrel? He says, it's time to make the wine. And every year we swell the barrels we ferment our wine in the barrels and then we'll press them out. And I said, well, that's great. I would love to help you out. And then after about two years, I asked him if I could make my own wine. And he said, why, of course, Bob. After getting entrenched in home brewing, Bob started to let his friends try his wine, bringing some on a camping trip with a fellow dad who decided he wanted to make wine too. The two dads eventually teamed up and turned their hobby into a business, buying an old building in the small town of Peru, Illinois, and opening the first licensed distillery in Peru in well over 100 years. Star Union is in what was a historic factory. Exactly. Share with me a little bit about the building's history. The building was built in the early 1900s. It was one of the earliest manufacturing factories in the area and employed over 6,000 employees in its prime heyday. It was a, a clock and watch, watch manufacturer. The West Clocks factory was in Peru, but not only did it employ all the people from Peru, but a lot of people from La Salle, Oglesby, Ottawa, Princeton. Um, those, the communities were small, but really the bulk of the people um, worked at West Clocks. It was one of the first places to employ the uh, assembly line, and it was, had a lot of union workers there, and there was a lot of different groups that uh, formed out of uh, after work. There was a bowling club, a knitting club, there was softball, baseball teams, and there was the whole social structure after work was really kind of around the people who worked there. My grandfather worked there for 40 years, and they closed down in 1980. I was living in Chicago at the time, and I would drive by there, and it was all boarded up, and I would ask myself, why isn't anybody bringing manufacturing into this and, and using this space? When it was time for us to decide where we were going to put it, we had thought about Chicago, but Peru is my hometown, and I wanted to bring my business back and try to be an economic engine to get this this beautiful building back and open to the public. So you've created a business in a space where former relatives worked and mm -hmm. that has now been brought back to life. And now that I understand there are other businesses that are also yes. in the space. Uh, we were the anchor tenant, but there is a, a whole wing of arts oriented businesses. There is some manufacture, other manufacturing that is in the east wing of the building. So people can come and they can taste spirits, learn about the history, and then experience other things that are there, the arts and, and more. Really, the building is just an incredible, beautiful uh, place to see. Uh, it's one of the early 20th century factories that are still in existence and are being embraced. There's a number of other distilleries that are 
popping up in these uh, revitalized historic buildings. I think we've done a great job in keeping the spirit of the building intact. I'm, we're really proud of it. Well, it's neat to be able, I think it's neat to be able to look at these spaces and then drink in that history when you're there, so to speak. Exactly. If I'm coming to Star Union and I'm gonna maybe take something home, what would I wanna make sure to take? Well, we have a whole line of rums. Our Navy Strength Rum won a double gold out in California at the World Spirits Competition. That really kind of set the table for us. We also have done really good with our whiskey, our 7525. Um, that is the name of our mash bill, 75% uh, corn, 25% rye. We're an Illinois maker, so we have embraced the Illinois farmer and we try to uh, incorporate that into our products as much as we can. Our vodka is made by 100% Illinois corn. We want to embrace the farmers that you know are across our our state. Well, I think the grappa is our next thing to taste then. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we should open a bottle then. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Yeah. It's not always that you get a studio audience for your podcast taping, but today we did at Camp Aramoni, and that's pretty yeah. fun. Because when communities come together around small businesses and help each other, yeah. it makes for a pretty sweet place to visit. So a few takeaways from this trip to Star of Rock Country. Not only is the nature here pretty sweet, but the people are downright nice too. And we'll be back. Tune in to our next episode, Mixing Street Art with Canoeing on the Illinois River. Plus, more drinks and history on the Travels with Darley podcast.